An armored truck stops at a coffee shop in the opening scene of the movie, which is set in Los Angeles, California. A group of robbers commanded by Ray Merriman, Pablo Schreiber, attack an attempt to break into the vehicle within a short period of time. The bandits kill the guards as they try to defend themselves and hold their ground. As soon as the police arrive, they start shooting at the robbers. Merriman eventually steals the truck with his crew, but then he reprimands Donnie, O'Shea Jackson, Jr., for killing the first guard. Detective Nick Big Nick O'Brien, Gerard Butler, visits the crime scene to look into it in the morning. Since Merriman blames Nick for killing one of his men, he has been looking into Merriman and his gang for some time. Detective Nick and his team begin investigating about the robbers. They have a history of four to five robbers involved in the heist. One of them is called Wilson Kidd by them, Donnie, who works at a bar. Nick approaches Donnie at the pub he works at and discreetly strikes up a cordial conversation. After a while, Nick leaves and waits outside for him. When Donnie leaves the pub and enters his vehicle, Nick uses his taser to put him to sleep. Nick takes Donnie to a home where his team of police question him about Merriman and his schemes. Donnie explains that Merriman and his team only let him in due of his prowess as a getaway driver and Merriman's admiration for him. A flashback reveals Merriman's plans to rob the Federal Reserve on that week's Friday in order to steal about $30 million in unmarked bills that would otherwise be destroyed. This bank has never been robbed in the history, and Merriman explains to his crew about the high-tech security protocols of the Federal Reserve Bank. Fifty-three break-in attempts have been done to rob the bank, but none of them was successful. Donnie is hired by Nick to deliver Chinese cuisine, and Nick then has him enter the Federal Reserve through the vents to snoop about. Nick's wife Debbie, Don Olivieri, learns at home that Nick has been secretly visiting other women, especially strippers. She furiously gathers her belongings and leaves with their daughters. Debbie strikes Nick and yells obscenities at him despite Nick's requests that she listen to him. Later, she has a lawyer deliver divorce papers to his workplace. Later, a date arrives to pick up Levi's daughter so she may go to a school dance. In order to scare him and ensure that he does not harm Levi's daughter, Levi takes the guy aside and introduces him to Merriman and the rest of their team. Merriman and the lads laugh as he walks away. When Nick calls Donnie out, Merriman and his group are suspicious because they see Donnie at the restaurant with them. To make sure Donnie hasn't been talking to Nick about their intentions, Merriman has his right-hand guy Levi, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, beat him up at their hideout. Donnie assures him that he hasn't disclosed any information to him regarding the robbery. Meanwhile, Nick barges into a small gathering with Debbie and a few of her pals while inebriated. Before being asked to leave, he becomes combative with one of the men. Nick visits a strip club and takes a stripper home with him. Merriman discovers him in the morning and does nothing about it after setting up the stripper on Nick to gather information about him. Nick, though, makes an attempt to see his daughter after work. The heist day has arrived. Merriman and his group break into the bank and kidnap people. While the mayhem is happening, Nick and his friends are outside, waiting for a perfect timing to put them down. Merriman instructs the manager to inform the chief that they want a helicopter and a sizable sum of money. On behalf of Merriman, the chief of police contacts and chats with the bank branch manager. When the chief of police tries to negotiate, Merriman has one of his men kidnap a prisoner and shoot her in a backroom to show that they are serious. Merriman calls Nick on his cell phone and has a challenging conversation with him. Before Nick and his men enter, the criminals burst the vault open and make their getaway through a hole in the floor. In addition, they discover the captive they allegedly shot to be still alive but afraid. To make sure the gang is receiving its money, Donnie is at the main building. He locates the money and hides it in bags. He serves as a delivery guy once more, but this time he gives the customer a bag of food that he had placed in the vent days ago. The client tries to stop him, but Donnie has already left. He is pursued and captured by Nick and his men, who beat him until he reveals Merriman's location. Donnie and another man have been fired from Merriman's team. They are obstructed in their attempts to flee after hitting a traffic jam. Merriman and his crew are trying to flee when Nick and his guys see them and jump out of their cars with pistols. After issuing a warning to other motorists, the cops open fire on Merriman and his group. Merriman continues to run as Levi and the other men are shot to death. Merriman is hurt as Nick shoots the man through a fence while pursuing him. Merriman won't leave quietly, so Nick jumps the fence to get him. Merriman tries to fight back, but Nick shoots him dead. He discovers Donnie has fled from custody as well. When Nick checks Merriman's van, he discovers sacks containing shredded cash. 
Later, when Nick visits Donnie's pub, he comes across photographs of him with several of the heist gang. Flashbacks reveal that Donnie always intended for everything to go his way, including working with Merriman, replacing the cash bags with the shredded bills, fleeing, and making off with the real money for himself. Nick comes to see how he was so easily duped by Donnie. In the closing scene, Donnie is now employed at a different bar in London, England. His team is nearby, sipping beverages and relishing their victory's fruits. A man enters from the store across the street. Serving him, Donnie inquires if he works at the jewelry store. When the man responds in the affirmative, Donnie buys him a beer.